Hey there, and welcome to Speak English with Christina, where you'll have fun becoming fluent in American English. I'm your English coach, Christina, and today we're taking a road trip across the USA. Well, almost. You're going to learn how to rent a car in the USA and how to avoid paying all those extra options that the agent tries to sell you. Let's go. Today's lesson is a collaboration that I'm doing with Lost in the USA, a French site to help you prepare an awesome trip to the United States. Go to lostintheusa.fr and you can get an audio dialogue plus a list of useful phrases to go with this lesson. And the link to their site is in the notes below. At a lot of rental agencies, you can literally walk around the parking lot and choose the car that you want. There are different categories of car and often the bigger the car, the bigger the price. Common types of cars are compact car, compact car. By American standards, it's, it's a small car. But if you want something bigger, you can get an intermediate car, an intermediate car, or the next size up, a standard size, a standard size, or a full size, a full size. Or if you want a small tank, you can rent an SUV, an SUV, which stands for Sports Utility Vehicle. The rental agent will ask you, what type of car would you like? This sounds like, what type of car would you like? What type of car would you like? And if you want to know the prices, you can ask, how much is a, mm, how much is a compact car? How much is a full size car? etc. And be sure that you know what's included in the price they tell you. Car rental companies are very clever, very smart. You see an advertisement, $9.99 per day. You rent a car for 10 days and your final bill is like $200. Now, I'm not a math teacher, but $9.99 times 10, what happened? Fees and taxes. Careful, because prices in the USA are indicated without taxes. So if the advertisement says $9.99 per day, that's the cost just for the car. The agency is then going to add state sales tax, and it's different in each state. In Florida, it's 6%, but in California, it's 7.25%. And some cities add their own taxes too. They add a vehicle license and recovery fee, generally two to five dollars per day, to finance the price that the rental company pays to register the car with the government. Then they can add other taxes depending on the state or city where you rent the car. For example, uh, a tire and battery fee, a tire and battery fee, to pay to destroy the old tires and batteries. Maybe a convention center fee or a stadium fee to help finance the construction of a local convention center or stadium. And if you rent your car at the airport, you may have customer facility charges, parking surcharges, 
and concession recovery fees. Basically, it's extra money that you pay for the convenience of renting a car at the airport. And if you see a lot of strange fees on your bill, you can ask, what is the customer facility charge for? What is the customer facility charge for? Or what is this fee for? What is this fee for? To be sure that you really must pay for it, ask, is this a mandatory charge? Is this a mandatory charge? Because car rental agencies are notorious for trying to sell you lots of extra options. Now the fun part, accepting or rejecting the agent's extra options. The first thing that they'll probably offer you is collision damage waiver. Collision damage waiver. It covers you in case of accident or damage to the car. You'll hear, do you want to add collision damage waiver insurance for just $29.99 per day? Or, in real spoken English, do you want to add collision damage waiver insurance for just $29.99 per day? Do you want to add collision and damage waiver insurance for just $29.99 per day? This is not required and your normal car insurance policy may include rental cars. Check to be sure and bring a copy of your insurance policy with you because some agents will indeed try to convince you that you must take the collision damage waiver insurance. And if you don't want it, say, um, no thanks, my car insurance covers it. It says so here. No thanks, my car insurance covers it. It says so here. And show them your insurance policy translated into English. Then they might ask you, do you want to add an additional driver? In spoken English, it sounds like, do you want to add an additional driver? Do you want to add an additional driver? And many car companies include your spouse, your husband or wife, uh, as additional driver for free. So you can tell them, my husband or wife uh, will drive the car too. Are spouses included as additional drivers without extra fees? My husband or wife uh, will drive the car too. Are spouses included as additional drivers without extra fees? This way, you show them that you know that it's common practice because you are a smart tourist. They might offer roadside assistance. Would you like roadside assistance? Sounds like. Would you like roadside assistance? Would you like roadside assistance? Uh, if you have a flat tire, you lock your keys in your car, you run out of gas on the road, the agency sends help. Not obligatory, but generally not too expensive. When you pick up your car, it'll already have gas in it. In American English, gas is what you put in your car to make it run. The British say petrol, we say gas. So the agent will tell you the car's already got a tank of gas in it, which sounds like the car's already got a tank of gas in it. The car's already got a tank of gas in it. And they'll ask you what you want to do when you return the car. Bring it in filled or bring it in empty and let the agency fill it up. They'll ask, do you want to return it to us with a full tank of gas? Which sounds like, do you want to return it to us with a full tank of gas? Do you want to return it to us with a full tank of gas? Or, They'll ask, 
do you want us to refill it for you? Do you want us to refill it for you? You want us to refill it for you? And you can say, um, we'll return it filled. We'll return it filled. Or if you choose the second option, you can refill it. You can refill it. Now, what about you? Have you ever taken a road trip in the USA? Did you rent a car? Tell us your travel stories in the comments. I'd love to hear your impressions of my home country. And don't forget to go to the site Lost in the USA to get an audio dialogue for renting a car and a phrase list that will help you. Now, it's time to hit the road, Jack. Thanks for watching. I'm Christina, and I'll see you next time. Have fun on your road trip.